When we buy a tool at Harbor Freight, there is a question that needs answering. Should we buy the extended warranty package from Harbor Freight or leave it to the 90-day warranty? Should we extend the warranty or underwrite it ourselves? Some could say this is one of the biggest questions of the ages. Let's take a look and see. Hi, I'm Scott Bain. They call me the old farmer. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings of breakage and arrows of outrageous frustration, or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing them with the extended service protection plan, to return and claim no more. Sorry for the minor modification of Bill Shakespeare's verbiage, it might be appropriate to look at some of the fine print in the extended service plan beyond the sales pitch of Harbor Freight's extended protection plan. This is what they write. Protection for the unexpected covers failures caused by power surges or as incurred in normal use. We do have an asterisk which goes on to say exclusions apply. See full ESP brochure and terms and conditions for complete details. We will be sure to do so. No lapse in coverage. All plans begin when the manufacturer's warranty ends. No deductibles or hidden fees. All you pay is the upfront plan costs. Service and support to get you up and running quickly. This is a window that allows them to take up to 15 days to fix a tool. But in practice, it's a swap out with the exceptions of generators and sewage pumps and such products that may be hazardous to have in the store, which is handled differently. You may have to ship it to them. Quick registration. Conveniently register at the time of purchase. The right solutions. Fast repair or in-store replacement options available. Around-the-clock support. We all know that around-the-clock support needs to be improved, and to be honest, they are trying to do so. In most cases, the extended protection is for one year. There are some products that have a two- or three-year package that is available, and then you can choose the length of coverage. Covers parts and labor for repairs on covered failures at an approved service center. Repair with use of non-original manufactured and remanufactured parts is allowed. If product cannot be repaired within 15 days, a new product of equal or similar features, capacity, specifications, and or efficiencies and functionality will be provided. Product will also be replaced if the same major failure occurs and requires three service calls within 12 months. If a replacement product is not available, Harbor Freight will either issue a Harbor Freight Tools gift card or provide a refund up to the actual cash value of the product, not to exceed the original purchase price of the covered items. I think if it's a gift card, they should throw a few extra dollars on top of it. But that's just my personal opinion. This is for some of the products that are installed and cannot easily be removed for repair. If a replacement product is not available, Harbor Freight will either issue a Harbor Freight Tools gift card or provide a refund up to the actual cash value of the product, not to exceed the original purchase price of the covered item. The most important point to understand is stated in the following, which I didn't find in the protection contract. Provides one-time product replacement on covered failures in store. Covered items will be replaced with a new product of equal or similar features, capacities, and or efficiencies and functionality. A Harbor Freight Tools gift card or refund up to the original product purchase price will be issued. To be honest, I could have missed it. I did read through the contract and then did a search and did not find anything in the contract that relates to the statement, which is on the webpage of Extended Service Protection. 
which is not in the actual contract. Now, to be honest, if Harbor Freight tightened up to the letter of the contract, they would lose a good portion of their market share. It's the walk-in replacement practice that is selling more of the expensive products. And let me remind you again that you need to read the terms of the contract before buying something that cannot be returned to the store. You may not want to accept those terms. That would be generators, pumps, anything that would be hazardous to have in the store. Now, this is only an assumption on my part. If you get home and opening the box, find damage before using, I think you could return it to the store, but call first to check. How do I choose when to buy the protection plan? How I decide is simple. If it has motors, bearings, it's something that needs to be accurate, anything over 10 or $20, I will buy the plan. The clerks at my store are pretty good at judging when you should buy the protection plan. And they also know what kind of returns are coming back into the store. If the tool is a basic non-powered hand tool, I won't buy the plan, even if it's over $20. For an example, I did not buy the protection plan for the anvil. Many of the Pittsburgh and some of the other tools have lifetime warranties, so no plan needs to be purchased. When I bought the Hercules 12-inch miter saw, I bought as much protection as I could on it. I don't mind using the plan, and for me it's not worth the hassle to bring the saw back at the end of the service plan for a new one. I could, but I won't. There's also ethical reasons involved with that too. If I buy a low-end power tool that is prone to failing, I will buy the protection plan. Many tools and products from Harbor Freight you will know within 90 days whether it will work or not. So don't do what I did with the angle grinder that I picked up for $5 and put on the shelf and forgot about it for over a year. As soon as you can, use the tool or product. Use it several times as a test. If it looks flaky right out of the box, take it back. Maybe it's something that you can open the box at the store to see if it will work. Who knows, maybe you should bring a Bauer or Hercules battery along just to make sure a tool will work the way you want it to. My last tip is don't depend on the floor sample of something that's put together. Sometimes the person who put it together did it wrong. Sometimes putting something together using some construction adhesive along the way will make the product perform beyond expectations. In other words, when you're putting it together, if you got ways of making it better connections by glue, by bolts, by whatever, wouldn't it make sense so that you have a better product than what you purchased? That's something to think about. Before I go, we have surpassed over 40,000 views. That means many are watching but not helping out. Watching the videos are important and thank you but we're trying to reach that magic 1000 subscribers number so that we can tie into a few dollars from YouTube we don't need to make a lot of money but there are expenses that are piling up so if you could subscribe share like and leave a message it helps out beyond belief there are thousands watching if 0.25% subscribe we would reach our mark if you can help, it would be greatly appreciated. Well, this is the old farmer, Scott Bame. Be well. Be safe. Don't forget to click like and click subscribe on the Old Farmer YouTube channel. And thanks again for watching. Bye. The VFW National Home for Children, providing families of veterans and active duty military opportunities for growth and development in a nurturing community. Please consider a donation to help their children and families. Icy Road speaking.